we're going to move on to how to put flying changes together. It's a little bit like knit one, purl one. Uh, not that I really learned how to knit. And it's quite complicated, but if uh, this is with flying changes in an order. Uh, if you go back to series one, episode five, you can find out my thoughts on teaching flying changes there. I've decided today to work with, again, one of our lockdown students, uh, Megan, on her thoroughbred horse because uh, I've chosen this horse uh, on purpose. I used to go and watch when I was six, seven, eight years old, 10 uh, lecture demonstrations. And I still watch today the very high powered famous names on famous horses. And I used to sit on the side and go, well, it's all very well for them. I'll, I'll never have a hundred thousand pound horse or a half a million pound horse. And those aren't exaggerated numbers. Uh, one of the top ponies in the world sold a couple of years ago for close to the half a million. I've chosen today because I believe you can train any horse. Uh, a thoroughbred horse, and Megan, when he came here, uh, he would be greener than he is now. Yes. How long have you been at Talent? Um, about a year and a half now. So Megan's been with us a year and a half. You escaped school at 16, did you? Yeah. Uh, was sent here because I'd met you in Newcastle. Yeah. That's it. And the rest is history. Yes. <laughs> now, counting is, and I know you have done a few of these on our schoolmaster and you've done them on him, and I know today he's making them look really easy. What have you done? Given him a happy pill for breakfast? No. He's in a really good mood. Um, number of strides. So I'm just gonna count strides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Now, if you were doing a freestyle at advanced medium, as long as you don't do two changes close to each other, I'm just gonna give you a freestyle exercise. Get ready to change out wherever you can, preferably on the outside marker. Good, so on the circle. Good, and then you get back to the outside and you can put another one back in. Now first, when you're learning what's called sequence changes, you have to, and then you do another one out. And then in a minute, you can put them on the circle points. Never mind, turn. Look, I had to teach you something new. One there. Good girl, another one here. And now I'm, I am going to start. You've got to concentrate on still doing this. And I'm going to count strides. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, but they don't have to be on sixes. Okay? You have to do them on the circle points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. Right, walk, good girl. Let me just explain that. You must do a freestyle. When you're riding the perfect circle, they'll be equal. Yes? I used to do them on seven. And if each one's on seven, the point being, if you do them in an advanced medium freestyle, if they're under four strides apart, or four strides or under a part, you're working at too high a level. If you do them on seven or eight strides, which you do by making a circle bigger, and I'd probably put them at, at, on eight at championship level, it shows obedience and it's not working above the level.